Hello viewers and welcome to the channel. Uh, in this week's video we'll be discussing Kogan, um, which has been absolutely one of the stars of the market since um, the pandemic hit in February. First chart I think is, is uh, definitely worthwhile seeing is um, chart of Kogan since inception um, and that's up against the all uh, sorry the ASX 200 accumulation index. It's almost a bad chart to use because um, comparing it against ASX 200 it's meant we've had to use some pretty big numbers as far as percentage gains but that's exactly what's happened with Kogan. Um, it listed in 2016 really didn't do much for the first period of, of, um, of its listing. Then in 2017 uh, market got excited and um, and you guys may not really remember this, but this, the sum of this weakness came after um, the CEO uh, sold a big chunk of stake, and I can't, uh, sorry, a big chunk of his stake, and that was certainly not managed that, uh, that well at the time, um, and obviously uh, led some to believe that the, uh, the bright future for Kogan might not be as bright as expected, um, as earlier expected rather. Um, and then we've seen a little bit of recovery here, short sell-off uh, when the pandemic hit, when I guess people were panicking and very unsure about which areas of the market would be uh, assisted and then of course at this period in March um, it's really just taken off uh, like a rocket ship. Um, we'll get into some some uh, slides presented at the most recent full year results uh, presentation. Now this is actually in August so it's, it is outdated a little bit um, in that they have provided some sales updates since then but I think some of the numbers in here are worthwhile seeing. Um, because FY19 to FY20, what you've seen is, is gross sales and revenue, um, but gross sales in particular, see a 39% increase. But of course, the pandemic hit in um, the second half of FY20. So what you see in the next slide is um, second half of both financial years, and that's a 62.5% increase. Um, and again, that's probably probably two to two and a half months of, of regular trading before that's that's kicked in. Um, so that's incredible. Um, I'll get into this a little bit uh, in a second as well. But what I, I like as well is that just a bit, a, a bit uh, which is earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization, and net profit after tax have both increased above the revenue gains. Um, but as I said, we'll discuss it in a second. Um, and if you yeah, if you look at this chart, this explains it really, really well. Um, and I talked about it uh, when I discussed Next DC in our last video. But a lot of these tech businesses, they do have high fixed costs, um, but they do also have um, incredible uh, scalability. So once they once revenue hits critical mass, you know every dollar of revenue that comes in the door has a higher and higher uh, percentage profit. Um, and that just continues to go on. Um, that even more so for Kogan as part of its business is um, a lot of Kogan branded sales which are higher margin for, uh, for the company and as its brand has been built, as its customer base has become more comfortable using the platform, um, sales to, in, of Kogan brand have increased which is ensured that its margins are getting better and better and better. So yeah, in here we've seen gross sales increase by 39.3%. I think that's um, uh, on a compound annual rate, um, whereas adjusted earnings per interest, tax depreciation, uh, depreciation and amortization is up almost 60% per annum. Um, now this is uh, the active customers number. Um, no, no need to really go into this, but right now, uh, almost 2.2 million active customers. Um, this is a monthly basis, but you could see even before um, you know March and, uh, and April, that they've been growing their, their customer base pretty quickly. Um, and so this is not a trend that's coming out of nowhere. This is a trend that was already in place. Um, you know, we know e-commerce has been growing, um, but it's been growing relatively slowly. Um, you know, and still before this pandemic was less than 10% of, of overall commerce. Um, and certainly the pandemic has accelerated that trend. Um, yeah, talked about this. Uh, the, the, Margin just continues to increase. Look, it's, this is not an incredibly high margin business, I should say, because they, I guess their whole point of differentiation is that they are the, the cheapest out there and they do fight on price and that means that their margins are always going to be at the low end uh, compared to many retailers out there. But, um, but it is growing, as I've said, as their revenue grows and as their sale of Kogan branded products grows. 
um, at a you know 10% margin. That's a lot better than what it was just a few years ago. Um, building the Kogan platform here, we're seeing repeat business and uh, versus new customers over here with uh, its new uh, orders. Uh, variation of the same and I guess this is where I want to get into my concerns about Kogan um, you know on a 5, 10, 15, 20 year basis I have no doubt that e-commerce is going to continue to grow um, I have no doubt that one day uh, the, the impediments to this becoming even more mainstream are going to be gone such as um, speed of delivery uh, you know we're already we're seeing in the US Amazon is trialing drone delivery um, and the day at which you can order something and be uh, confident of delivery a few hours later uh, that personally for example would eliminate uh, the main issues I have with buying online um, so the overall marketplace the total addressable market for Kogan is going to be very very exciting but my concern is that the massive gains in market share that Kogan has grabbed and, and you know, a lot of the e-commerce sector have grabbed um, once the pandemic subsides, once people are more comfortable going back to shopping centres, will, um, will those gains be held on to? Uh, I don't know. You know, I, I, I've used Kogan throughout this period. Previously, I didn't. Um, and I can't say with confidence that I'm going to continue to use it once I'm basically living my life exactly what, as I was uh, previously. Obviously, that assumes a, a vaccine comes and that we do return to uh, uh, the life that we, we became accustomed to. But um, on that assumption, I, I, I am a little bit concerned about how much the market is pricing in these market share gains um, and the repeat business and the increased order sizes and increased order value uh, into the future. Um, so that, that would be my, my, ba my biggest takeaway from this is great business, great tailwinds. Um, you know, I, I, I would not be surprised whatsoever, whatsoever if Kogan is a lot higher when we're looking back in 10 years. But I am concerned about the, uh, the gain in the share price over the last six months. I am concerned that the market's pricing all this in, uh, these, these gains into perpetuity, or at least you know, bringing forward the whole uh, um, growth outlook, uh, you know, two, three, four years. Um, so I'd say price-wise, I can't say I'm incredibly excited about buying at these levels, um, even though, as I said, I think the outlook for the business is very, very strong. So um, unlike Next DC, where I think every every uh, everything driving that company is going to get better, and I think while you're probably, you're buying it at a high price, I feel very confident that they're, all the gains they've made are going to be kept and more, um, because it's obviously so hard for businesses to go from keeping their business their data in the cloud to go to to bring it back uh, in office, um, whereas people's shopping habit, uh, habits change in a hurry, and um, and I do fear that at least for Kogan that a lot of people will start shopping out once again. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for viewing. If you found this video useful, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, leave any comments as well. And um, we'll be back with a new video next week.